This is 7 National News and in our top story. The 24th session of the Arab Summit opened on Tuesday in Doha, Qatar. With the participation of the UA Vice President and Prime Minister and Ruler of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, who was leading the UAE delegation, along with Arab leaders. The chairmanship this year was passed from the summit in Iraq to Qatar, headed by the country's Emir Sheikh Hamad bin Khalifa Al Thani. On the sidelines of the summit, the UA Vice President met the head of the Syrian National Coalition, Ahmed Muaz al-Katib, with the attendance of the UA Foreign Minister, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Zayed al Nahyan. Sheikh Mohammed discussed with the opposition leader the means of supporting the Syrian National Coalition for the aspirations of the Syrian people. His Highness stressed that the UAE, under the wise leadership of the UAE President, His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed al Nahyan, supports the Syrian cause and stands behind the Syrian people, as the UAE calls on the opposition to unify their front. His Highness stressed that the UAE condemns all acts of violence in the country. During the meeting, Sheikh Mohammed also reiterated his country's full support to Syrian expatriates in the UAE, especially these during these hard times. Concluding his visit to Doha, Sheikh Mohammed then returned home after the first day of the summit on Tuesday evening. His Excellency Mata al Tayyar, the Chairman of the Board and Executive Director of the Road and Transport Authority, opened the forum for the MENA Centre for Transport Excellence today at the JW Marriott Marquis, which looks to boost public transport strategies in the MENA region. In his opening speech, al Tayyar stated that the MENA Centre for Transport Excellence looks to establish an information centre providing the best transport and mobility practices, the training of specialists to conduct surveys and research, as well as enhance the cooperation between transport entities in the region. The three-day forum will discuss a number of topics, including the importance of public transport, integrated systems for sustainability, and the role of public transport authorities and regulations. The RTA will also review its strategic transport plan, operation and maintenance of the Dubai Metro, as well as funding of public transport projects. Research is a major part in the MENA public and the MENA Center of Excellence. We're working hardly in that. We started by launching the first project, which simply going to work and gathering the uh, information and statistic about the public transport in the region, which is being done for the per- first time. The other important part is uh, the, uh, co- the cooperation that we will be doing with the academic sector, where we'll be working with them and developing some uh, majors in public transport to encourage the student to start uh, uh, to start exploring a new uh, field like public transport, start learning it, and definitely this will contribute to the overall knowledge of all. Engineer Abdul Aziz Malik, the chairman of the Higher Committee of the MENA Center for Transport Excellence, stated that the key challenges for the MENA region are the planning and construction of public transport projects, the scarcity of data in supporting the planning process, a lack of qualified and sufficient human resources, and the low awareness on the impact of public transport in the community. He revealed that the share of public transport means ranges from 5 to 23% of the population for the MENA region. Cataracts are the leading cause of blindness worldwide, accounting for 47.9% across the globe. Adding to this is the estimated 1.4 million children who have severe visual impairment. Noor Dubai said the support from various organizations has resulted in providing 6.2 million people worldwide with much needed eye care. Last year, they reached out to over 7,000 people in Yemen and treated more than 4,000 in Somalia. On the third day of Dihad, they signed new agreements with Dubai Islamic Bank and the Dubai Police. This year, Noor Dubai officials say they aim to further strengthen their collaboration with Dubai Police in its fight against preventable blindness. Among those present at the signing ceremony were His Excellency Essa Al-Maidor, the Director General of the Dubai Health Authority, 
Lieutenant General Dahi Kalfan Tamim, the Chief of Dubai Police, and Dr. Manal Tayam, the CEO of the Nor Dubai Foundation. As we know, more than two, 285 million uh, people worldwide having this problem of uh, you know, blindness. And with this help, we can uh, you know, uh, minimize and reduce this uh, suffering from a lot of families, you can imagine, you know, uh, losing the, the sight. So uh, I encourage uh, everybody who really wants to be on board not, not to hesitate. And achievements are there. So I hope you know, this will enhance also the activity that we are carrying and doing. Uh, we've signed uh, two MOUs as part of our uh, collaboration or partnership with other organizations. The first one is with the Dubai Islamic Bank, and it is uh, they are our uh, uh, our main sponsor now for the third year, and uh, their contribution is to fund four eye camps for 2013 around the world, and with the Dubai Police, uh, similar to last year's uh, initiative that was in the in the prisons. This year they would like to expand and go abroad and uh, they will be uh, sponsoring two of our eye camps as well. They say these initiatives and partnerships allow them to help those suffering and improve their way and quality of life. Nor Dubai successfully ran eight eye camps in impoverished countries in Asia and Africa, as well as conducted campaigns across the UAE. A collaboration with the Dubai Police in 2012 also enabled them to screen 300 prison inmates across the UAE for the early detection and treatment of diabetic retinopathy, a condition that leads to blindness if left undiagnosed, which causes more than 4% of blindness worldwide. It's a disease that, uh, that, uh, uh, that leads to blindness in diabetics. So what we did is that we identified all the diabetic inmates and uh, we managed to screen them for, for their control on blood sugar, for uh, their eye diseases. The technology that we used was, uh, was very new to, the, uh, to this region. What we did is that we photographed uh, the retina of their eyes and then we, uh, through the, the software it was sent to the hospitals for the doctors to check. And then the inmates that, who needed um, uh, further treatment were referred to the hospitals and those who didn't were advised for a new photography after three months. At least 1,600 taxis in Sharjah will be converted to run on natural gas instead of petrol within the next two years. The Sharjah Transport Corporation have revealed that 800 cabs will be converted this year, with 800 more going green in 2014, as natural gas emits less emissions and is more efficient than petrol. The corporation plans to convert all cabs by 2015. Abdullah Al-Zari, the Director General of STC, was quoted as saying that they have reached an agreement with the four franchised taxi companies operating in the Emirates to change the colour of their cars for the initiative. Dubai is the 19th lowest risk city in the world, moving up from the 29th spot last year and the first in the Middle East for recruiting, employing and relocating staff. That's according to the latest report. The Aon Hewitt's People Risk Index, which covered 138 cities, is based on employment and relocation rates, the amount of risks that firms need to deal with recruitment, as well as access to education, government regulations, demographics, employment practices and talent development. Dubai successfully came higher on the list than cities such as Miami at 21, Sydney at 26, Brussels at 27 and Paris at 36. The report stated that the main reason behind Dubai's high performance is its ability to recover fast when it comes to the effect on people risks. The social and political stability as well as the high quality of life and talent availability in the UAE also added to the city's performance. The lowest risk city in the world was found to be New York and Damascus was the most high risk in the survey. And finally, looking to other news, one of the most highly anticipated events on Dubai's fashion calendar, the Grazia Style Awards welcome the region's fashion elite at the JW Marriott Marquis Dubai on Tuesday night. The fashion crowd were out in force to honour those in the industry that have pushed the boundaries in fashion. 
The glamorous crowd boasted some of the most influential individuals on the region's fashion scene, ranging from emerging to established talent, as well as retailers and bloggers. Awards were handed out over 18 categories, from best regional designer and best local designer to best boutique, to name just a few. The Grazia Style Awards were set up seven years ago and every year it's just got bigger and bigger and we've added more and more categories. It's basically a celebration of the local fashion industry as well as the international fashion industry. And yeah, just really celebrating style and um, showcasing the amazing talents we have here.